they do at SNA 2019. Today they are focusing on surface ships, surface to air missiles and propulsion systems. Well, things are coming along very well. Uh, we're halfway through the, the phase of, of doing concept design. Actually, that reports out in June of this year. And so we've had this interactive process uh, that started almost a year ago of continual meetings with the Navy, understanding customer uh, desires and requirements, and take the parent design, which is the Italian Frem, an absolutely superb combatant ship, and making the modifications to accept U.S. Uh, combat systems uh, and make sure that we are compliant with all the U.S. requirements for survivability, damage control, different compartmentation, and those sort of things. And that's moving forward uh, very well, very effectively. Uh, I think the whole process has, has gone extremely well so far. FREM is about the right size uh, to handle the U.S. requirement combat systems has made it very easy. You know, functionally, we're using the same locations to replace the radar, electronic warfare, uh, the VDS. Uh, so it's been relatively straightforward to meet those requirements without doing modification to the ship. In fact, we think we're somewhere in the ballpark of about 85% uh, identical with FREM, which we believe is a very strong positive in what we want to do. Uh, it's truly a great parent ship to depart from as you start modernizing and updating uh, to the U.S. Uh, requirements. So we brought Alpino, ITS Alpino over for about a month and we started in Norfolk Fleet Concentration Area, uh, came up to Baltimore where we could tap into the Washington, NAVC, and OPNAV folks. Then we went to New York and we ended up in Boston and it was uh, I think uh, a phenomenal visit. Uh, we had a lot of folks from different activities get on board and visit the ship. They got to tour it. We had uh, several reporters go to sea with the ship and talk to sailors and get around uh, and see what the ship can actually do. Uh, and it was an exceptional uh, period of time, a very positive uh, introduction to the United States Navy on the capability that we are bringing with FREM. Well, I think we're going to continue to grow our North American footprint. Uh, we are, are looking at expanding to maybe get into the maintenance side uh, and see what we can do. We have strong commitment uh, to do what we can to offer some of our state-of-the-art technology as a global shipbuilder and maintainer uh, to help the United States and the United States Navy uh, work that industrial base and see if we can up that game uh, quite a bit. I, th I think that's the next uh, area of interest and focus is to continue to grow, uh, to expand, and to do what we can to help the United States Navy. What is this uh, scale model? This is a scale model of the, uh, the new Lewis class uh, oilers, the TAO, uh, brand new program. Uh, NASCO uh, won that contract about three years ago. Uh, we started uh, working on the design. It was a clean sheet design. Uh, we did that, started about two years ago. And then we just started uh, construction on the very first ship. It's uh, and, uh, the Lewis, the John Lewis, named after Congressman Lewis from uh, Georgia. Uh, the first ship started construction in September of last year. Uh, we start construction on the second ship of the class in July of this year, 2019. It's a, uh, right now we're under contract to build the first six of these ships. Uh, this is going to be a 20 ship class for the Navy. So we're very excited. These ships are the ships that refuel our carrier battle groups at sea. Very important program to make sure that those forward deployed forces and forces at sea can uh, get the fuel and supplies they need to sustain themselves worldwide. So a very important uh, asset for the Navy. The current class of ships are the, are the Kaiser class. They're about 30 years old, so the Navy's anxious to, to get the new class uh, on board, and we're excited to be building those for the Navy. 
what new capabilities they are bringing with this new design. So there's, a, there's some the, the design was to, uh, put together so that's the more efficient from a fuel efficiency and cost perspective. Uh, we put some, some new innovations into the ship to be able to to move some dry cargo around the ship, some freeze and chill uh, for food and whatnot. But it's principally an oiler to carry fuel for the carriers of the fuel the airplanes and then drive the ships. But we have done some innovation. It does have a flight deck on the back. Uh, for uh, to be able to operate and move supplies via helicopter, um, but again, it's it's uh, the design of the ship. The hull is much more efficient through the water. Uh, I'm not a naval architect, but uh, that you know the design that was allow it to to be more efficient uh, through the water and to be able to save money. Uh, but it's uh, we're excited to be building the program, and we're uh, looking forward. The first the first ship will take us about 24 months to build. And uh, we should learn quite a bit from that first one. So the subsequent ships after that will probably take us a little bit less time to build, but on average, it'll be anywhere from 22 to 24 months to build. So we the first one will be delivered in 2020. It's an exciting time for uh, Standard Missile 2. In 2017, we uh, signed a production contract for the restart of the Standard Missile 2 production uh, line. Australia, the Netherlands, Korea, Japan, four international customers of a total missile of 262 missiles globally to restart that production line. We have also uh, here in December signed an engineering, manufacturing and development contract with the U.S. government for a Standard Missile 2-3 Charlie, an active variant of the Standard Missile. Standard Missile 2-3 uh, Charlie adds a active component to, uh, to that missile, provides an additional war fighting capability over the baseline standard missile too. It's complementary to our entire uh, layered air defense uh, portfolio from standard missile six through standard missile two through evolved Sea Sparrow missile to rolling airframe missile to uh, the close in weapon system. It's complementary to that capability of an international uh, large part of our international business, large part of the, the international capability. Well, SM3's got a lot going on. Uh, 2018 was a great year. It was a really a year of testing where we had uh, some, some, some very good highlights with SM3-1B and SM3-2A. Uh, we started off with a SM3-2A uh, FTM 45, which was a really a getting back on track test where we revalidated the uh, SM 32A and successful uh, intercept of a MRBM. It was a ship launched engagement of a separating target. Um, it was the missile uh, SM 32A was launched by John, USS John Finn, and uh, the target was launched out of a PMRF. The, uh, the next test we had, um, we rolled into an actual international test. It was a JFTM-05, Joint Flight Test Mission 05, which was conducted by the Japanese. It was done by uh, the, it was a SM-31B test, where they shot a, uh, again, they shot an MRBM from an organic engagement from the J Japanese ship Otago, who just completed a combat systems upgrade. So they they just upgraded their combat systems, wanted to validate, uh, that they did have full BMD capability and uh, immediately, well, actually just prior to the SM3 engagement, uh, they did an SM3, I'm sorry, an SM2 engagement. So they wanted to check the full IMB capability of the, of the combat systems. Finally, we ended the year with FTI 03, which was another SM32A test. It was the first uh, intercept from Aegis to Shore that we used uh, SM32A. So uh, we, we engaged an IRBM, an intermediate range ballistic missile that was air launched off of uh, Kwajalein area somewhere. And uh, it was in, the SM-32A was launched from Aegis to Shore. So that was a very uh, challenging shot. But what made it really the most significant piece of it was the, the demonstration of engage on remote capability, where we used a Ford-based Tippy-2 to actually uh, do the initial detection and and combat system solution for the engagement. So, in essence, what that proved was that we can use an offboard sensor and an offboard combat system to do the complete engagement. And so, with the range of SM-32A, that greatly expands the battle space 
and it really adds some new dimensions to uh, missile defense and allows flexibility in the implementation of SM3-1B with SM3-2A and other BMD assets that we have. We have a lot of countries that are interested in SM3, in particular SM3-1B. Uh, we have uh, the Japanese just finished their uh, combat systems upgrade on, on JS Shipotago and Ashigara. So those are two DDGs that they're uh, going to be outfitting. And also their uh, planned construction for DDG 7 and 8, which are also going to be BMD configured. Um, we have the in uh, Korea, there's interest in upgrading the uh, KDX uh, 3 destroyers, so that way they can uh, employ SM3 and uh, we want to make sure that there's, you know, Aegis countries that are that have the capacity. If they're interested in trying to do the upgrade, they'll wor they'll be working with the U.S. government, and so we're doing what we can to support the U.S. government and the Missile Defense Agency and any of the international interests. This is the um, the permanent magnet motor that's on the U.S. Coast Guard offshore patrol cutter. It's the auxiliary propulsion motor. It's a very power-dense solution uh, that provides excellent efficiency for the U.S. Coast Guard. This technology, permanent magnet technology, as you can see, this is a very small, very lightweight solution. It fits into very small envelopes into the ship and is an ideal solution for a Coast Guard or a Navy that's looking for fuel efficiency and reductions in operational maintenance costs. If you look at most international navies around the world today, they are using uh, electric propulsion to meet really their war fighting capabilities. It's an essential part of any future frigate that you have quite operation for ASW capability. Um, what Leonardo DRS can offer is the most compact solutions on the market today that can fit in the smallest places and provide the quietest operation for any surface combatant out there.